Hey guys, we're back on the part two in the next video. And as you can see behind me, I have the SV Boney on the SV Boney mount. Let's take a quick look at it and maybe we can look at a couple things. Okay, so here we go. So we have the SV Boney 80 millimeter. Here's the SV Boney uh, mount, which you could also purchase. And it might be almost perfect for this size and weight telescope. The tripod's my own. Okay, I attached my smartphone camera to it. Okay, right now we're just looking at some trees there. A little bit of windy. That looks pretty good. Okay, so here we go. Or hydro pole, that looks pretty good. Okay, we're going to look at a building that's about half a kilometer away. Now, we're not peeping toms. Okay, guys, so here is the testing, and it's clear today. And the sun is out. For you guys, you got to take caution when looking at the sun. You have to have the solar filter on the front of the telescope never on the back of the eyepiece. There are sometimes, looks like a moon filter, but it says sun, throw those out. Do yourself a favor, don't even sell them, break them up, throw it in the garbage. They're not even safe. Okay, and I don't have a finder scope on this guy, but you can usually, it shouldn't be too hard. I'm using a 32 millimeter Palazzo, so that shouldn't be too hard to find. Oh, there we go, found it already. And you just kind of point it to where the angle you're looking at without like looking at it. And then just kind of, if you use a 32 millimeter eyepiece, it has a big field of view. And then just swirl a bit, and then there you go. Okay, you can see some sunspots right there on the bottom. There's one over here. I see some granulation too. It's going to be clear tonight, so we're going to take a look at Jupiter. Okay, guys, we have the SV Boney 80 millimeter. I put a good two inch diagonal because it doesn't have no finder scope. I can put a two inch eyepiece, and that way I can find stuff without a finder scope. I have it on an EQ6. Yes, this is way overkill, but at least I have tracking uh, with it and hand control. And we got to get going because even though Jupiter is out, there's Jupiter right there. I have to get going before it goes behind the building there. Without a finder scope, just a two inch eyepiece, and then there we go. And now I can just blow up the planet. So, so far, I see three of its moons, but this is a 31 millimeter in a 560 millimeter focal length is very low power. Okay, we're gonna go now to a medium power. This is a 6.7 ultra wide mead 4000 Japan series there is. Why is it not tracking? I see four moons, two bands easily, and they're not in a straight line. The first and the fourth are in a straight line, and then the two in the middle are kind of um, diagonal from each other. I think my batteries are low. I'll charge them in a little while. And now my extension is in the storage room. I'm just gonna try to do without it and I'll see what I can do. At least because I'm polar aligned, I only have to manually move it with my hand in one direction. So now I put it two times uh, Barlow, uh, three times triplet uh, the meat. That looks pretty good. Yeah, I don't think it's working. So I think it has enough juice to light up the button, but not to do the tracking on the motors. Okay, we're gonna bump up the power to a 4.7 Mead Ultra Wide 4000 Japan eyepiece. So very good eyepiece. And this is probably gonna take us to the limit, I think. Okay, nice and big. Let me see if I can get it a little bit sharper. Not so easy to move it by hand at this power. So I'm at, so this is a 560, I believe, divided by 4.7 alone makes it 119 times two. We're at 238 power. So if that's an 80, 
160 is the maximum. So I'm at 238. I'm well beyond it. You know what? It's nice and clean. I mean, I'm also thinking this is probably four or five months past opposition. So if it was at opposition, it would be probably at least double as nice. I can clearly see two bands, easy, and the four moons. It's actually fairly sharp. Let me just go back down to the 6.7. It'll be a little bit more realistic around the 200 power, I think. Okay, see, I lost it at, what power was this? Okay, so a 6.7 divided by two equals 3.4. 560 divided by 3.4 equals 164. So this is actually exactly what the telescope should do theoretically. I mean, it's hard to tell real fine detail just because it's so far away right now, but can clearly see the four moons, two bands. Maybe it's kind of half tracking. It's not because at this power, it should be, you know, within like 20 to 30 seconds, but it is staying a little bit longer and what's nice see about you guys having an equatorial mount even if it's not on go-to or tracking just by pointing north you're and i'm guessing because the building's in the way so um, i assume that's close enough to north and then all i'm doing is even just moving it by hand at the 164 power and the 238 power whatever that was and uh i could do it you know you just push it to the top corner and it's going to go diagonal towards the left corner and that's it it's sharp okay when you defocus you could see it but at focus it's minor but it depends on the people that really hate chromatic aberration there is a little bit but it's controlling most of it well i pretty sure okay almost positive that a brand new people was looking at it they probably wouldn't even know unless the experienced people tell them look for this they wouldn't know but even an experienced person most of them would say that's pretty good they probably that would be fine so i would say this is a good image nice and sharp i enjoy it the bands are clear. I lost it, but I just move it with my hand in the one direction, and boom, I got it already. So that's the great thing about an equatorial system. Yeah, 233 power, guys. It's actually, I would say, fairly good. I can still see the bands. The, I can see all four moons in one shot. It's a little bit more fuzzy at 233 but I'm way beyond the 50 times per inch that's that's like 73 power more which is a lot so I think the 6.7 with the Barlow is definitely better but it's still a decent view with the 4.7 yeah I would say that's pretty good I would be very happy with that okay as you can see Jupiter there with the smooths it's overexposed that's why it's so bright so I'm gonna zoom in change the exposure so we can see Jupiter let the camera focus it's trying what do you guys think of that i think that looks pretty good considering it's like four or five months past prime it's trying to fight the current of the atmosphere but i think that's okay for a live view okay guys so there we go so that's a live view and i don't know if you could see Jupiter is practically touching the building. Okay, what do you guys think of that? That looks pretty sh So it uh, I gotta use the Naglers. Area is always nice seeing the mountain ranges over here. Okay, 
Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, guys, so here's my conclusion of the SB Boney 80 millimeter ED. So I think it's a great little scope. Okay, for me personally, I have used 80 millimeter refractors, but because I'm in a white zone, a Bordeaux zone eight, I find that the 80 millimeter is a little bit too small. Um, I personally like to use the 102 millimeter as my grab and go. I think as the first part you guys seen has a lot of great features. It's a really good price. I think it's a bargain, $521 Canadian at present. An 80 millimeter ED with all its features. You saw how it did in the daytime sky. If you're also looking for maybe like a spotting telescope and that kind of thing, um, sure, that can work. It did very well on Jupiter and the moon. And even though Jupiter is way, it's, it's far now. So I can imagine Jupiter and Saturn on opposition, or that means as close as approach, is probably gonna do much, much nicer view. Remember, I'm also using also a cell phone to capture that video image. So it's not like it's a dedicated astro camera. So I think overall, it's a very good scope, very good price. And uh, that's it. I'm going to ask SV Boney can lend me, once I return this one, the 102 version. And I think that one's going to be a little bit slightly bigger. It's going to capture a bit more. And that's where I personally like as my minimum refractor, just because of how bad of a light pollution zone I'm at. So I'm going to ask if they can lend me that. And maybe after that one, I can ask to borrow the 122 uh, ED triplet. But anyway, guys, that's it. Why not you? Why not me?